This is Thornhill, a charming historic village near Center Street and Young in York Region. The town of Thornhill is in the middle of the federal riding of Thornhill, which is made up of a large chunk of the city of Vaughan, as well as part of the city of Markham. It's a hugely diverse riding that begins at the northern border of Toronto, Steeles Avenue. So this corner is really the nexus of a, of a lot of communities. Right? It really is. It's quite astounding. We've got Toronto behind us. We have Markham to the right and we have the city of Vaughan to the left. That's what I represent that corner. But and the meantime, the and then riding, the town of Hol Thorn Hill. The, and the old, the old town of Thorn Hill is just up the block a bit, uh, settled in the early 1800s. And there's a few of the buildings still... Alan Sheffman has been the Ward 5 City Councillor for the City of Vaughan since 2004. He's been a resident of Thornhill for much of his life. Most importantly, there's going to be a subway. This is Young Street. And has seen the federal riding swing from a Liberal to Conservative. Right at Young and Steeles. And that's an issue that I'm sure the candidates in the election will be talking a lot about. This time around, there's no incumbent, so he's watching this riding with great interest and believes it'll be a tight two-way race. I, I don't know who the NDP is, but it's really in this riding, it's, a, it's very much an afterthought. Uh, it's a handful of votes for the NDP. Right. It's really between the two major parties. And if you look at the history of Thornhill, uh, electoral history of Thornhill, it's always been liberal or conservative. Uh -huh. So would you make any predictions about what's going to happen on the 20th? Yes, it's going to be very close in this riding, I'm very close. Okay. Since 2008, the riding has been represented by Peter Kent, one of just a handful of Conservative MPs in the GTA. Before that, Thornhill was largely considered a Liberal stronghold. Start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Liberal Susan Cadis held the riding from 2004 to 2008. You were a school board trustee. But lost to Kent in what was considered an upset. Hard-working Thornhillers' lives. Prior to that, Eleanor Kaplan was the Liberal MP and Cabinet Minister in the Cretchen years. The budget, you're always making choices. Peter Kent, a popular former Cabinet Minister in Stephen Harper's government, has decided to retire. It's been an honour to serve uh, Thornhill these past uh, 13 years. Um, but it is, uh, uh, as the Old Testament tell, tells us, uh, for everything, there is a season, and my season is, is ending, and it's time for generational change. But today, he's lending a helping hand to the young woman hoping to replace him. Oh, oh hey! Conservative candidate, <laughs> Melissa Lanceman. Is this a helper? A this helper is, this a... is the best volunteer we have. <laughs> but don't tell all the other volunteers. <laughs> Melissa Lanceman is an energetic 37-year-old and is very media savvy. She has worked on numerous conservative campaigns over the years, including Premier Doug Ford's, and she held senior staff roles in Stephen Harper's government. She's also a member of the LGBTQ community. She recognizes that she's different from a stereotypical conservative party member. I'm surfing this last night. We had company in it. I'll send you the link. And she embraces that. Yeah, you can only watch it, yeah. Why did you think it was important to run? Well, look, I've been involved in politics for a long time, often in the back rooms, often uh, being an advisor to policy, uh, and there was a limit to what you can do there. And so I've decided to put my name on the ballot so I'm not, you know, so I have a seat at the table. I think that uh, the last six years in this country have been going in the wrong direction. I've seen a lot of policy that I would have spoken up about, and I want to be part of decisions going forward to make sure that uh, Canada's in a better place when we emerge from what we've experienced in the last 18 months. And why the Conservative Party, Melissa? I've always been a Conservative, and I think the Conservative Party um, is a big big tent with lots of ideas on um, how to make this country better, how to do it in a fiscally responsible way, and how to do it with less government. So being conservative, uh, being from here, is completely normal to me. How many hours do you spend canvassing every day? Uh, generally four to six hours, depending on uh, the weather and what other meetings and stuff Whoa. I might have. There's a reason I get in all those steps. Vernon, how are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going I am working. I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> it's all good, Vernon. Thank you very much. <laughs> One of my very good friends and key volunteers. Awesome. Gary Gladstone is running for the Liberals. He has a long resume of philanthropic work, 
fundraising for charities and nonprofits, and advocating for vulnerable communities, including working with Indigenous communities up north. Oh, hi guys, where did you get here? He says he's getting lots of support at the door. And on this day, got a visit to his campaign headquarters from two of his biggest supporters, his parents. Truthfully, we're, we're not much good on knocking on doors. This is not Gladstone's first time on the ballot. He ran unsuccessfully against Peter Kent in 2019, but garnered a respectable 35% of the vote. We're very proud of him. And he thinks he can turn the tide red once again this time. See, I got wonderful press agents with me in the office wherever I need them. <laughs> Significant difference now. First of all, uh, through the pandemic, um, people of Thornhill have seen no ifs, ands, or buts that Trudeau and Liberal government have had their backs, been able to make sure that uh, the benefits got out there, got out there quickly, so people didn't have to make the uh, choice between food on the table or paying rent or mortgage payments and move forward from then. So now I'm finding on, on the doors now, you know, Liberal government had their back. They know that we'll have their back and moving forward for everyone, as they say, uh, we're on the right track. The riding of Thornhill is very multicultural with large Chinese, Italian, Russian and Korean communities. This riding is also home to Canada's largest Jewish community at nearly 30 percent. Many of the issues facing voters here this election are echoed across the GTA and the country. Things like affordability, housing, recovery from the pandemic. But there are others unique to Thornhill. Serious concerns about anti-Semitism is one. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. But the other subject that comes up again and again with voters is transit and the plan that is now in place for the route of a new subway line in the riding. We need a subway, but I don't know what to say. Yes. We need a subway. This is not good the way it is right now. Yeah. So, but I, there's got to be a way around tunneling under somebody's house. Residents of York Region were thrilled that the long-awaited, eight-kilometer-long Young North subway extension was going to be built up Young Street from Finch to Highway 7. But a few months ago, Metrolinx, the government of Ontario's agency that manages public transport, changed their proposal and announced that the line would veer east off Young at Royal Orchard to link up with an existing rail line. Known as the third option, Metrolink says the change will save time and money, but the proposed new route will mean tunneling under homes, and affected residents are not happy about it. Is that one of the biggest issues for you this election? That is the issue as far as I'm concerned. It's not that I don't care about um, all the other issues that the candidates are bringing to the table, but this is my life and this is our lives. As I said, we've been here 32 years and I'm not interested in having a subway tunneling underneath our homes. Everybody knows how disruptive any kind of construction can be to a neighborhood and that subway construction can take years. In fact, if you go to Shieldmark, they're actually doing the geotechnical drilling now. Joan Clausen pointed us to some subterranean testing that's being conducted in the area for the subway project and says even that is noisy. And then when the project is complete, their problems won't end there. Subway runs, what, six in the morning till two in the morning? and every, uh, I'll say, five to ten minutes, the noise and the vibration from that alone will be disturbing. Then you have the venting. Uh, they have to have emergency exits. Where will they be? The residents have not been told any of this. I just think it's grossly unfair. The two main candidates are also strenuously opposed. Gary Gladstone has flyers in his campaign office which urge Metrolinx to reconsider. But I'm advocating strong with my constituents because we need the subway big time, but it can't be going underneath people's homes in an untried and un unproven technology. So to make it easy on everyone, stop option three. Uh, we need to make sure that the subway is coming up Young Street where it needs to go. There's no question it's a big issue in the riding and I've been there since day one. Um, when I ran in 2019, that was number one issue 
that I was dealing with at the time right. as well. Thornhillers were finally going to get a subway that connects to downtown and connects us to a uh, to a northern hub up in uh, up in Richmond Hill. Uh, and now there's a problem. So you know, I think as uh, uh, as a, as the federal government should work with with the province, uh, with the municipalities, and and particularly with residents under uh, you know under or. Uh, above that subway now right, right. Uh, to get it going on the right route, right up Young Street. I think it's a ridiculous idea. Councillor Alan Sheffman is also opposed. Plan, current plan on the table for Metrolink. He points out that while these decisions rest primarily at the provincial level, it is an issue in this election and keeps coming up with voters because there is federal money involved. There's yeah. a good solution. The federal government increased their contribution. If the federal government would increase their contribution enough to, if you like, push the province, which is the major funder, yes. there's no question about that, yeah. and the director of the program, the plans, uh, they probably would go along with it and we could solve the problem if the feds came up with the money. Thornhill is one of Canada's top 50 wealthiest ridings with a median income of over 90,000 a year. Two thirds of the homes are detached and more than 40% are owned outright. No mortgage. There is a lot of affluence, but the pandemic has changed the fortunes of many. This Italian shoes and clothing boutique has been located here on Steeles, west of Young, for more than 20 years. Our table was a favorite shoes. Uh huh. Wow, they're and wild, eh? Uh, yes, they are. The owner says she's always done well until 18 months ago when COVID 19 hit. And while she is open for now, it is still a struggle. But you feel like your business is still at risk? Absolutely, absolutely. If the government will stop helping, definitely the business is at risk because we don't see the end of pandemic yet. Yes. Rena Burfer says without the government assistance on the part of the Trudeau Liberals, she surely would not have survived. It, it, it was everything for us because without the help, I don't think any small business could survive yeah. because months and months and months of close and now even that we are open, the store is mostly empty because people are afraid to come. There's a lot of people afraid to come, a lot of people asking when they're coming in if you're vaccinated or not. Uh, there is um, people like not even in the mood for shopping yes. uh, because there's nowhere to go. Uh, it start a little bit here and there, but people are afraid to go to the restaurants, people are afraid to travel, people are afraid to go. There's no theater, there's no movie theater. Yeah. So there's nowhere to wear the stuff. Oh, that's cute. Yes, that's our little bag of uh, small size clothing. And yet with Rena, her gratitude does not necessarily translate into support for Trudeau at the ballot box. This is the only thing I can say definitely thank you yeah. for help and we need help yeah. uh, so to survive uh, but uh, I probably will no go farther than that. But uh, you're still, so you're still undecided as a voter? Uh, yes, I'm still undecided, yeah. yes. The difficulties small businesses have faced and continue to face are nation and worldwide. But business owners in Thornhill's large Chinese community have an additional burden, and that is the discrimination many have suffered. They are often blamed for the pandemic, which began in Wuhan, China. We see um, China-Canada relationship is not that great. And there is a strained relationship between China and Canada, thanks in part to the continued detainment in China of Canadians Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver. It has led to a generalized mistrust of Chinese Canadians, according to the head of the Chinese Business Association. Should the Canadian government be doing more to repair that relationship between uh, our two politically, I don't think we can do anything. Because right now, Looks like it's two powers stand firm, the East and the West. Yeah. Canada's a small player. We try not to be under this wall, but yeah. we can't help we it. Can help not help it. Have some Chinese businesses gone under because of that sort of discrimination, would you say? Yes. In spite of these difficulties, oh, Ben yeah. Leung is wary of ongoing government assistance oh, right, right. that he says can lead to when abuse and fraud. This new incentive will provide a 25% tax credit on amounts of up to $100,000 that Canadians personally invest 
in a small business over the next two years. When Aaron O'Toole announced his Rebuild Main Street tax credit and loans in late August, the question was raised as to whether with this promise the Conservatives might be guilty of the same thing they accused the Liberals of, reckless spending. The Thornhill candidate fired back. There are ways to spur the economy. Um, and that is not just unconditional spending under the guise of emergency spending on everything and everyone. There are smart ways to invest in, a, uh, in the economy. And I think that, uh, that our platform, first of all, it has the promise to return to a path to balance in 10 years. I was there. I was in the room uh, during the 2008 uh, recession. In fact, I was one of the writers of the speech when we balanced the budget in 15. So that was seven years where we went through a crisis. The country had to spend a lot of money to, uh, to fix it. It, but it spent it on actual things, on building roads, on building bridges, on creating jobs, not to fund indefinite social programs. How are you doing, ma'am? Gary Gladstone defends his party's policies, which he says protect society's most vulnerable, including seniors. I'm much happier with the progressive plans that we have going forward to continue to have everyone's back and to continue moving forward. One of the Prime Minister's recent announcements was uh, the increased training of PSWs, which is huge, and increased pay across the board, mm -hmm. which is really what's needed to, kick, to take care of, their el of the elderly. So um, yeah, that's the way we need to move forward. Gladstone also points to the Liberal government's role in getting the 79-unit Lou Fruitman Rena residence completed. It was really a huge boost uh, to this housing project. In July, the feds contributed nearly $18 million to the mixed-use facility that provides affordable housing for people with disabilities and vulnerable citizens who are sometimes left on the sidelines of services like this. A big piece of this is also the funding at various levels of the government, federal government, the region of York and the city of Vaughan with their subsidies coming up um, uh, for the developmental charge of waivers. Um, and also from the province, the generous contribution from the province of Ontario. So this wouldn't have been possible without the contributions from all levels of government. And how important is it that this residence is here now? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the need um, is enormous. So waiting lists in York Region and in Toronto for people with developmental disability are in the thousands. Do you think the pandemic has also caused people to lash out more? Absolutely. There's another major issue on the minds of voters in Thornhill. This riding is home to more than 30,000 Jews. They are disturbed and frightened by the drastic uptick of anti-Semitic violence, not only in Thornhill, but across the country. Benet Brith says that in the month of May alone, there were 61 incidents of violence nationwide reported to their organization compared to nine in all of last year. Michael Mostyn believes the escalation in anti-Semitic incidents is directly related to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the Middle East after fighting between Israel and Hamas erupted in May. People have a right to whatever opinion they want in this country, and that's all fine. But nobody has the right to violently impose that or to look at somebody and say, well, because you're a member of the Jewish faith, you must have a certain position on Israel, mm -hmm. and I'm going to violently attack you. That took place. We had in Montreal rocks uh, thrown at um, individuals' heads. Fifteen people have been charged criminally. But here in Thornhill, what we saw take place, as we did in certain other um, uh, municipalities across Canada, we saw individuals driving through neighborhoods here in Thornhill um, and just asking around, where are the Jews? In an act of intimidation, coming to their home, people from outside of this area. And that's extremely concerning, and it should be concerning for all Canadians. You can see the dark spot. Yeah. Just before the election was yeah. called, this Vaughan public school was vandalized with anti Semitic graffiti. Reporter Jeremy Grimaldi tells me there have been also violent incidents on the streets. And, and, and let's not forget that recently there was a quite a few flare-ups in York Region related to the, the conflict between Palestine and Israel. Tell me about those. Well, there were, there were a lot of protests in the streets, uh, and a lot of them came to blows and clashes. Police were often involved. Each group had their own flags, and they'd meet in the middle of the street, and punches were thrown. Uh, 
people were hit with flags and police had to break them up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Orthodox Jewish rabbi Mendel Zaltzman tells me at his synagogue... Good morning. Hey, welcome. Thank you so They much. have brought in a number of security measures, including keeping the doors locked, installing a dozen cameras, and putting protective film on the windows. The fear is there, and that on its own is a problem. So we definitely need action on it. In 2021, we added a few more cameras... He says he has never seen such anti-Semitism in his life, and it's deeply concerning. And you have to kind of come out and say, this will not be tolerated. We're not going to allow this to happen. And w at least we didn't feel that that was happening. And if it did, it wasn't made public that that was happening. And I reached out and I told politicians, you know, this typically these things only get worse. There'll be another round in a year or in two years. Hopefully not. I mean, no one should have to get killed and hurt. But... If we don't react the right way the first time, it will be worse the next time. That's what history has told us. Both the conservative and liberal candidates are Jewish and have deep roots in the community. The riding is accustomed to wall-to-wall -to -wall political support for Israel. Good afternoon. As MP, Peter Kent has shown unwavering support. Prime Minister of Canada. As did Stephen Harper as Prime Minister. Harper was unequivocally pro-Israel. The Liberal Party has been much stronger on the UN votes than the Conservatives have uh, because there used to be many abstentions. We're supporting Israel in those debates. Gary Gladstone emphasizes the Liberals are also clear and have established policy in their support for Israel and the Jewish community. Every Canadian deserves to be and feel safe. He points to the recent anti-Semitism summit held by the government this summer. The rise in hate-motivated crimes against the Jewish community in the past few months is not only alarming, it's completely unacceptable. During the recent war, both the Prime Minister and uh, the Foreign Minister, Mark Garneau, had very strong statements. The official policies haven't changed um, between um, Prime Minister uh, Trudeau and Harper. We don't have any anti-Semites in our caucus. They wouldn't be allowed. But Melissa Lanceman is quick to point out that the Liberal Party welcomed a new caucus member in June. Jenica Atwin crossed the floor from the Green Party. Putting your vote where, it, where you want it to count, where it aligns with your values. And After making it publicly clear that she supports Palestine in the ongoing Middle East conflict. On Twitter, she wrote... Forced evictions must end. I stand with Palestine and condemn the unthinkable airstrikes in Gaza. End apartheid. I know that my liberal um, you know, friends and colleagues... She did not change her stance in a news conference following her departure. So very much again, I, this is about not backing down. It's not about being other than who I am. I'm Jenica. I'm from Fredericton. And I have the same priorities and the same values that I've always had. During a Zoom debate between Lanceman and Gladstone, the Conservative candidate took the Liberals to task over the incident. And I think that actions speak louder than words, and I think the Liberals com uh, um, claim to support the IRA definition of anti-Semitism and then immediately accepted Janica Atwin, their new Green Party recruit, after she egregiously violated that very definition with anti-Semitic comments calling Israel an apartheid state just 11 days before her welcome party. And no wonder violent anti-Semitism is on the rise, because when you call Zionism apartheid or racism or genocide, what you are really doing is you are giving justification to violent anti-Semites. I think we're a lot better off than going down the road of the conservative legacy of divisiveness, polarization, negativity, anger, wedge politics, and uh, God forbid the cuts that uh, could be coming. Um, anti-Semitism right now, um, Melissa, you're quite right. Anti-Semitism and hate right now is at an all-time high, um, as well, not only for our communities, but other communities. And it's important that we all stand together. And I think on, on this, we agree. Hi, how are you? Good. Do I think that's who you are? That's me. <laughs> How's it going? Okay, it's well, who are you? Well. I'm Miriam, and I live here. Hi, Miriam. You can count on this household for sure. Thank you very much. Both candidates are firing with all cylinders to try to win this riding. Bye-bye.
I'm running to be Thornhill's next MP. Melissa Lansman is using social media to post catchy ads about herself. More of the same just hasn't worked. That supporters say are helping change the face of the Conservative Party. What we're seeing with Melissa Lansman and several other candidates that the Conservative ran, not only in this election, but the last election, is a new generation of voters and a new generation of candidates and elected officials. Um, Melissa represents a young millennial um, point of view that's burgeoning in the Conservative Party. Um, she comes from a diverse background, as in she is part of the LGBT community, um, a community that typically feels that they don't have a space in the Conservative Party. And I think having uh, Melissa Lanceman running such a successful um, on-the-ground campaign here in Thornhill, and I think that she will be very successful in, in her efforts. I think that speaks to a new brand of conservatism. Yeah. And Gary Gladstone is knocking on as many doors as possible, pulling in as many volunteers as he can. Laura, if you want to come with me. Including the provincial Liberal candidate, who will be running in next June's Ontario election. We've had a lot of success in this province where we've had federal Liberal governments and provincial Liberal governments in Ontario working together uh, on cooperation on housing programs and infrastructure programs. And so I actually think it can be a real plus um, to have a federal Liberal government and a provincial Liberal government here in Ontario. So my real priority right now is working with Gary and helping to make sure that Gary is elected and can represent Thornhill uh, in Ottawa. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hi. good morning. Hi, I'm Melissa Lanceman. I'm okay. running to be your next MP right here in Thornhill. At least one poll has shown that Thornhill will remain Tory blue after the election, but we've been running into a lot of undecided voters. I'm really torn on who to vote for. I've been looking online, I've been reading different articles, and it's very hard because you don't really know who to vote for. Everyone has promises, but they can't show how they're going to keep those promises, where they're going to get the money from. There are many challenges ahead for candidates and leaders in this election, and the local Vaughan City Councillor has a plea for whichever party forms the next government. In an era where people lash out at others' differences uh, is to provide leadership in our country about diversity and the, not tolerance, but something way beyond tolerance, but how we need to live together. And I think the federal government has a major role in that, as the provincial government does, and as the municipal government does as well. We need to live together better. I'm Pam Seidel for CPAC.